Hey STEM 1 students, uh, today we're going to go over solving one-step equations. I apologize for the quality of my voice right now. I am fighting a bit of a sore throat, so bear with me. Um, what we're going to do today is just kind of talk about a few basic concepts, and then I have a couple examples we're going to work through, so um, shouldn't take too long. Just a, just a couple to refresh from what you learned last year. So one-step equations are, are basically what you see on the bottom of this handout, and um, one-step equation basically means we're either going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide to figure out what, what variable would have to go in, or what number, excuse me, would go in uh, to satisfy this equation. So what could we replace uh, the letter P with in number one to make the left side equal the right? All right that's kind of the big picture. So uh, the biggest thing that I want to stress to you is this comment right here. We're always going to isolate the variable by using the inverse operation. So what, what are inverses? Well, it's really just opposite. So what's the inverse of multiplying by 9? Well, the inverse of multiplication is division. So we would say the inverse of multiplying by 9 is to divide by 9. Okay. Um, inverse of subtracting 3, well, since subtraction and addition are inverses, we'll say the inverse of subtracting 3 is to add 3. Um, the inverse of dividing by 2, now this one gets a little tricky, because when we divide by a negative, the inverse is obviously multiplication, but a lot of students want to change the sign on what you're multiplying by. So, um... Just to kind of illustrate this point, I'm going to show you my graphing calculator and just do a quick calculation here. So um, this happens to me actually quite a bit because I'm kind of lazy in my calculations and I don't want to have to restart if I'm doing a whole bunch of calculations. So like let's just say you had to type in a bunch of, bunch of numbers that you were multiplying and you were like, okay, four times... Uh, negative 3 times, and you were supposed to type in um, negative 5, but let's say you accidentally typed in negative 4. All right, so you evaluated all this, and you're like, oh, I, I just, I didn't mean to type in this times negative 4. Instead, I, I wanted to type in something else. So a lot of times, I'll just do the inverse of my last operation. So I'd just divide this by negative 4. And then that would basically be like, it's almost like this last operation didn't happen. So then I could just continue on and go, okay, well, I meant to do times negative 5. And so you can kind of see the inverse of multiplying by negative 4. If you ignore the negative 4 in the top row, that would give us negative 12. Well, if we got rid of that last step, you can see over here, by eliminating the negative 4, you'd have to divide by the negative um, that you originally typed in, and then um, it would give you the, the value that we started with that we had for 4 times negative 3. So just kind of a quick illustration. Um, so the inverse of dividing by negative 2 is to multiply by negative 2. So when you're multiplying and dividing, don't change the sign. Keep the sign the same. The only time you change the sign is when we're adding and subtracting. So the inverse of adding 11 would be subtracting 11. I'm just going to abbreviate. There we go. All right. So um, to undo division, make sure that when we're using multiplication, it goes in the numerator. And, and I'll give you an example here in just a minute to, to talk about that. Um, and this is my favorite line. I actually got this from a student at a Catholic school when I taught there, and I, I kind of I fell over almost rolling laughing. And I was working on some problems, and the kid raised his hand. He said, Mrs. Markley, it was Dreckman at the time. He goes, Ms. Dreckman, I just got to tell you this. Math is just a bunch of BS. And I looked at him, and I said, excuse me? And he said, yeah, you heard me. Math's just a bunch of BS. Math's just a bunch of both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other. And so I thought that was kind of funny. So a lot of times this year, we'll talk about this BS concept. And what I mean by that is, again, it's, it's both sides. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do the same operation to the other. 
So that's kind of what this next sentence is. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So that's kind of the golden rule of equation. So when I look at this number one, I try to circle or, or kind of focus on my variable. Remember, variables are things that we don't know the value of. So this variable um, is what I want to isolate. And most of you can probably do this mentally. What plus 8 is 12? Well, you can kind of tell that's pretty quickly. You can tell that's 4. Um, but eventually these problems get a little more complicated. So make sure you're really kind of illustrating this both side concept. I like to draw a line through the equal sign. So I have a left side and a right side. So then I say, okay, with the part that I circled, I'm adding 8. And what's the inverse of adding 8? Subtracting 8. And whatever I do to one side, I got to do to the other. And see, now I can just work in columns. So my P stays on the left side. This 8, that's positive and negative, drops out. And then 12 take away 8 is 4. So P is 4, just like we suspected it would be. Um, on number 2, the operation that's being used is multiplication. Whenever you see a variable next to a number like this, um, it means multiplication. And so the opposite of multiplying a number by 5 is going to be to divide both sides by 5, and notice I'm putting division in the denominator. So these 5s are going to cancel out because j times 5 divided by 5 just leaves us with j, whatever we started with, and then 15 divided by 5 is 3. All right, now, number 3, the main operation that's happening between the variable and the negative 3 is division. So uh, we want to make sure that we're going to divide, or excuse me, that we're going to do the inverse of division. So the inverse is multiplication. But when we do our multiplication, we want to put it in the numerator. Otherwise, it doesn't cancel out. And so I'll over here, I'll kind of show you what I mean. If you put, if, there, if the original question looked like this, and you put another negative 3 down here, those don't cancel. That actually becomes x divided by 9. And now x still isn't by itself. So it, when you put it in the denominator, it's, in essence, you're really dividing by that number instead of multiplying. See, if we put it in the numerator, now that whatever number was here got multiplied by negative 3 and divided by negative 3, so they cancel. And then we can do that to both sides of the equation. So now the negative 3's cancel out, and x has to equal a negative 27. And if we check that and by plugging our answer back in, instead of x, if I put negative 27 divided by negative 3, yeah, it does actually equal positive 9. So we can kind of feel good that we did that one right. And that's really one of the nice things about one-step equations is you can always plug your number back in and see if it, it works. So like on number 2, if I put a 3 here, 5 times 3 is 15, I got that one right, okay? Um, again, kind of focusing on both sides of the equation here. If m has been subtracted by 2, I'm going to do the inverse, which is add 2. So that means the 2's cancel out here, and m is equal to a negative 19 plus 2 is still negative. Um, it's just going to be a little less negative, so negative 17. All right. Um, number 5 has a fraction. And these actually are a lot easier than they look because when you multiply by negative 1 half, um, we can cancel that out by just multiplying by the reciprocal because I want this 2, this negative 2, to end up in the numerator. And whatever's in the denominator, or whatever's in the numerator to start with, I want to be in the denominator. So since I multiplied by negative 2 over 1 on the left, I'm going to do the same on the right, negative 2 over 1. And see on the left side, now the 2's cancel out, the 1's cancel out, and we're left with just r. And in the numerator, we have, or on the right side, we have a negative 24 divided by 1. 
or all over 1, well, that's the same as just negative 24. And again, mentally that makes sense because we said half of half, negative half of something is negative 12. Well, if I take 24 times a negative half, Oops, that should have been positive. I'm glad I checked my work. A negative times a negative is a positive. So if I take half of 24, it would be 12. But since I'm taking a negative half of 24, it gives me negative 12. So 24 is my answer. Okay, five is very similar. We want the 3 fifths to cancel out. So since this was multiplied by 3 fifths, I'm going to multiply by 5 thirds. And we're going to do that to both sides. So 5 over 3. All right. And my 5s cancel. My 3s cancel. N equals, and I'm going to put 18 over 1. Um, and that way it's easier to reduce my fractions. 3 goes into 18 six times. So I'm just reducing that. 3 goes into 3 once. 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 1 is 1, so I'm not going to put divided by 1 because it doesn't change. And that's it. That's a wrap. Please try the homework questions, and I'll be back um, the next day here. We'll, uh, we'll see how it's going.